In this video, we will discover that systems of linear equations can be thought of as decomposition problems. And for those of you who may have been getting a little bit impatient with the ideas we've discussed so far, and perhaps wondering where all of this might be going, this should justify all of the work that we've done, because linear systems are undeniably important. And if linear systems are equivalent to decomposition problems, then decomposition problems are undeniably important. Even if we ignore all other spectacular applications of decomposition, such as signal processing, as we discussed in one of the very first videos in this course. So in any case, here we are, talking about linear systems as decomposition problems. Now, of course, a lot of you have already studied solving linear systems before, but you probably approached it from an entirely different perspective. You probably thought of linear systems as a collection of individual equations, and you manipulated them as you would individual equations. For example, you might add a multiple of one equation to another, or you might multiply an entire equation by a number, or you might switch the order of two equations. Now, of course, all of that amounts to Gaussian elimination. And we too will discuss Gaussian elimination, but we'll justify it from this new perspective of decomposition. So for those of you who have studied linear systems before, but thought of them as a collection of equations, this perspective is new, but it should and will become your dominant perspective on linear systems. Let us now accomplish the goal that we set out for ourselves in the beginning of this video. Let us show that linear systems of equations are equivalent to decomposition problems. And we'll use this as an example. Now take just a moment and pause the video if you have to, to figure out how I rearrange the coefficients from this system to form this decomposition problem. So here's what I've done. I took the right-hand side from the system of equations and turned it into the target vector. And then I took the coefficients that correspond to the same unknown and turned them into these four vectors in R3, the decomposition vectors. And I claim that to solve this system is equivalent, <coughs> excuse me, to solving this decomposition problems. In other words, the solution to this linear system, which is four numbers, and the solution to this decomposition problem, which is also four numbers, will be the same sets of numbers. Now, some of you may look at this problem and this problem and see right away, oh yeah, it's the same thing. But let me say the words anyway, because even if you already see that this and this are the same thing, hearing the words may be helpful. Here's how I justify the equivalence of this system and this decomposition problem. I try to put in words what it means to solve this linear system of equations. To solve this linear system of equations is to find four numbers, we call them x, y, z, and t, such that three conditions are simultaneously satisfied. The first condition is, of course, that one of x plus two of y plus three of z plus three of t equals 12. And you can easily state what the other two conditions are. Now, if you have found such four numbers, then these three conditions are simultaneously satisfied. That's what it means to solve the linear system of equations. Now, what does it mean to solve this decomposition problem? It is to find four numbers such that this linear combination on the right-hand side evaluates to this target vector. Now, in order for this linear combination to equal this vector, once again, three conditions must be simultaneously satisfied. Why three conditions? Because there are three entries, and each of the three entries on the right must match the entries on the left-hand side. Now, let's break down that condition into the three individual conditions. And these unknown coefficients are unnamed, but we can give them names. Let's call them x, y, z, and t. And if we have found four such coefficients that this linear combination equals this vector, here's what it would take for the first entries to match. We would need 12 to equal x times 1 
plus y times 2 plus z times 3 plus t times 3. And you can come up with what the other two conditions are. And if you listen carefully, the condition that I just read off was completely equivalent to the first equation in the system. And it would be, of course, the same thing for the other two conditions. So this proves or shows that this decomposition problem is equivalent to this system of equation, equations. In other words, the solution to this decomposition problem or collection of solutions is exactly the same as for this linear system. So there you go. That accomplishes the goal that we've set out for ourselves at the beginning of this video. We have shown the equivalence between linear systems, according to the old perspective, to decomposition problems, the new perspective, the new dominant perspective on linear systems. We have now accomplished all of the goals for this chapter on decomposition. I would now like to set our goals for the next few chapters. Now that you know that linear systems are equivalent to decomposition problems, you may be eager to practice solving linear systems because you already know how to solve some decomposition problems. And you may be very eager to learn Gaussian elimination so that you're able to solve problems that you're not able to solve by sight. Well, it turns out we're not quite ready for that yet. We're not quite ready for that because all of the problems that we have encountered so far have been particularly I would even say unreasonably nice. And what I mean by that is not so much that they have been easy to solve. After all, Gaussian elimination can solve any problem that's hard to solve into a problem that's easy to solve, so that's not what I'm talking about. What I mean by nice is the fact that all of the decomposition problems we've encountered so far had one unique solution. Now, this nice scenario where the problem has a unique solution does come up very frequently in applications and often plays the dominant role. And we'll spend a lot of time talking about linear systems that have a unique solution. But if we were to focus exclusively on that nice scenario, we would be missing out on about 90% of what linear algebra can tell us about our natural world. And we're certainly not going to do that. So what we need to do is talk about scenarios where something quote unquote goes wrong compared to the situation with a unique solution. So what can go wrong? Well, two things. Number one, there might be no solutions, which would be the case with this linear system or this decomposition problem if we were to change any one of these three numbers. And it turns out that the scenario with no solutions is much more interesting and much more rich than you might think. What else can go wrong? Well, we could have more than one solution, which is the case for this linear system and this equivalent decomposition problem as it stands right now on the blackboard. And we will learn that as soon as there is more than one solution, there is necessarily infinitely many solutions. And then the task becomes to capture all of the infinitely many solutions by, the, by a nice mathematical expression. Also a very interesting goal. So, in the next chapter, we'll address the scenario where there are no solutions. And, this, and in the subsequent chapters, we'll talk about the scenario where there, where there are infinitely many solutions. And that will lead us to some of the most fundamental concepts at the heart of linear algebra. Linear dependence, dimension, and basis. And those are the concepts that give linear algebra its beauty and power.